The second tip to make your rehearsals more effective are color it with bold, bold choices. Ultimately, what is your job? Your job, like we said, is to take that script off the page, off the, the paper, and make it uniquely yours. Again, we always hear the term um, in Tom's class, you want to pee on it, make it yours, make it personal. Uh, and that means bold choices. So you, your job is to, yeah, you got to serve the, the text and serve the story and, and fulfill the requirements of the text. But then it's about you bringing your talent, which is your creative choices. And by making bold swings and taking bold swings, and uh, the, the term that we always hear is your talent is in your choices. Never make one choice when you can make three choices. Never make three choices when you can make 33. Never make 33 choices when you make 333. Never make 333 choices when you make 3,333. You guys know what I'm saying, right? Just color it, color it, color it. Use pencil crayons and colors that don't even exist. Mix them together. Make, throw in some glitter on that shit, you know? Like, just get it in there. <laughs> just get it in there. I don't know what else can we say with, with bold choices. I mean, for us, our um, terminology that we use is we would infuse it with the guideposts um, through Michael Shirtliff and, and uh, the three that Tom has added, the 15 guideposts. So making sure that you can uh, have as much in there as possible. And the thing about rehearsals too is often we're getting sides where we don't have all of the information and and a lot of people freak out at that. They're like, well, I don't know what my relationship is or I don't know how I know this guy or I don't know how long I've known him or I don't know why I'm actually here. Then it's just your job to just make it make shit up. That's creative and make the biggest, boldest choice. That usually means it's not just a friend that you kind of know. It's your best friend that you loved and you've known him since childhood. And or it's not just a a, a crush that you kind of think you might maybe sort of like. This is like the most fiery, passionate love relationship that you've ever been in. You're madly in love with, with this woman. Um, so that you're you're making the strongest, most visceral choices rather than tepid vanilla choices. Mm -hmm. So like don't don't paint things with vanilla. And a lot of that comes again from worrying about what they do or do not want. Like, and I used to think of this all the time. When I first started acting, I was like, well, just tell me what you want. Like, do you want me to say it like this? Do you want me to say it like that? Am I mad here? Or am I happy here? Like, and it was all me sort of overthinking. What do they want? What do you want me to do? I can do anything. And it was just kind of me like, <laughs> you like, you want me to act? I can act. I can, yeah, tell me what you want me to do. But that's not what it's about. On set, the director and the ADs and everyone, they got enough to worry about. They don't want to be telling you what to do. They just want you to bring it and color it. And if they have some adjustments and some redirects, then they'll give that to you. But be bold, take big swings, and infuse it with as much of your own unique personality and your own special skills. If, if you're a dancer or a singer and you can sing a line or you can find a moment where you can move and show off that, oh shit, this, this lady, she's got some dance and some rhythm, um, throw in vocal variation. So go high on a line, go low on a line, stretch some words out. Go real fast at some point. Go real slow at some point. Do all those things um, because you, you got to remember an audition is not about being right or wrong. Um, it's it's um, it's it's weak or strong, and it's it's really it's it's an audition, and it's not just an audition for that part. Sometimes it's an audition for you with that casting director or with that production team which means you're sort of, this is like a general, it's like a first date where you're be like, hey, this is me. This is what I bring to the table. I bring a ton of creative choices. I bring a lot of fun. I bring vocal vari variation to it. I bring tons of humor to it, mischief. I bring tons of physicality to it. Um, so just, you just show them a thousand choices and, and then they're like, well, okay. Like anything that we give this person in terms of a scene, they're going to color it with a million things. So we're never going to be they're, they're never going to be thinking like, oh, well, like, what do we do with this? Like, how do we make this something? They're just like you. You make it something and we sort of tweak it a little bit. Mm -hmm. Make sense. Anything else yeah. you want to add there? Well, e even if it seems like there isn't a lot of choices to be made, because there, there's a lot of scenes that you're going to be auditioning for. They're fairly small roles like 
for, for the beginning of your career, it's going to be fairly small roles. And so you have to infuse a lot of these bold choices. And that comes with the guideposts that comes with vocal variation, viewpoints and all that stuff to make your audition stand out. And the more you do that, even if it doesn't seem like there is a lot there for you to work with, there's so much underneath the surface. And the more you dig, the more your innate curiosity will come out to play. And like, I love being a text detective, but sometimes I, I'm very lazy when it comes to it. And I don't want to do the work a lot of the time, but it's finding that motivation. And especially when you dig deep, you'll get so invested in it because now you're like, Ooh, I didn't see that before. That's really cool. I want to keep focusing on that. And I need to keep exploring that avenue. So like the more you do that, the more invested you become, the more excited you'll be. And as Tom likes to say, if you're more excited about it, then you're focused on the work because if you're nervous about it, you're focused on yourself and that doesn't serve you, especially in the audition. Right. Yeah. And nobody wants to worry about you and your ego and your own personal problems and your insecurities. That's like the, that's repelling. Same as it is in a date. If you sit down, you're like, oh, how's my hair? I was, oh, I feel so fat. Like, are my eyebrows fucked up? Like, what's going on with my hair? Oh, my skin. Oh, this doesn't feel too good. Oh, I feel real nervous right now. You're just like, OK, check, please. I'm out. Like, <laughs> no need for a first date like or a second date uh, or a first date. Um yeah. And, and as far as like um, those, if you don't have a ton to work with, if it's a smaller, smaller sides, that's your time to shine where you get to be a creative artist and you get to make shit up. You get to play. Um, now, it, you can't just make shit up for the sake of making shit up. That's so wild that it's just like, oh, I decided that I'm going to be an alien or I'm half robot. And it's like, well, what? where did that come from? Uh, well, I thought it was a wild choice. Like, or I thought I, I thought I would scream the whole scene because I have a medical condition where I scream. So I was just like, oh, everyone, how are you doing? Like, you can't, you can't be so random. But um, one of the other things is um, for us, guidepost eight is, Brandon? Importance. Importance. So make everything important when you like everything you talk about if you if you're talking about um a food and you're mm -hmm. you're listing a, a list of food like really fucking love that food when you talk about it um love everyone have an opinion about everything that you're talking about if you're if you're referencing another character let us hear in your voice how you feel about them if you're speaking in the voice of another character throw on a little voice like they talk so that there's all these different colors. So it's just painting with as many colors as you could possibly paint with. And the, I guess one other thing I'll say about um, bold choices is I always find the more time I spend rehearsing and prepping with something, the more layers of the onion you peel off. So if you're doing everything very last minute, and sometimes we don't have that much time, mm -hmm. but Use all the time you have to the best of your ability. So um, if you get sides on a Thursday night and the deadline's not till Monday, well, if you start only on Sunday afternoon and you squeak it in Sunday night, you're then you're going to wake up Monday morning or Tuesday and be like, oh, fuck, I could have done this. But if you had a rehearsed a little bit on Friday, slept on it, rehearsed on Saturday, then you're like, oh, shit, what about this? I didn't find that. And then you got all these sparks of new ideas. I always used to find that in live auditions. I'd walk out and I'd be walking home thinking, oh, fuck, how did I not do this? And it's just a function of time. So use all that time that you have. The more you rehearse, the more you'll uncover and just keep digging and digging and digging. And um, Tom always uh, tells us that your rehearsal is really a series of questions that you ask about the script and the given circumstances and, and your given character. And then your, your performance is the answers to those. So the more questions you're asking about who am I? Why am I here? What do I want? What am I fighting for? What's my relationship? How do I feel about this? How do I feel about that? How do I feel about her? How do I feel about him? Um, what's the big event here? Um, all, all these questions then your answers is going to be a, a colorful performance rather than just like, if your only question is what do they want, then it's like, that's just, 
it, you, you've kind of lost at the beginning of it. So color with bold choices. I'm colorblind, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> and, and not in a, and I don't mean that in a, in a racial way. I mean that in a, I'm a color, I'm colorblind. Uh, I see all those dots and I just see a big circle full of dots and no numbers. And people are like, yeah, what's the number? And I'm like, I don't see numbers. I see a bunch of red and green dots. Thank you. If I'm golfing, when I'm golfing, uh, if the pin is red, if the flag on the pin is red and there's trees in the background, mm -hmm. I will not see that red flag. It just blends into that. So I'm, I'm mm. cursed. I can never be a, a fighter pilot. And uh, maybe I can't be a crossing guard either because I'll be telling kids to cross at a red light when it's green or green when it's red. Yeah, here you go, Lori. My son, yeah, I feel his pain. We can never be fighter pilots. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for you, Lars. Well, that's what I had to fall back on an actor. I was going to be. It's, an a, it's too bad because you can't see the the colors of the beautiful poster that's behind you for Audition Hero. Well, I see colors. I just see them slightly different than other people. It's not like I. It's, I don't see. I used to fuck with people like in um, in high school, especially or university. I'd meet someone and and a girl would be like, "Oh, you're colorblind. What does that mean?" And I would be like, "I only see black, white, and gray." I see no colors, but uh, I, I do see colors. And I see my blurry face again. God damn it. Logitech. All right. Go I can't... do an entrance and an exit, Lars. And action. Oh. Ah, and we're back in full focus. <laughs> All right. Um, <laughs> By the way, if you're loving this, uh, make sure to go to laughingvikings.com slash audition hero. Save your spot for audition hero. That's January 27th at 6 p.m. is day one. We're going to have a ton of fun and we're going to be training on all things audition related, how to step into your dream role as an audition hero. Uh, and that's going to be very interactive as well. So you can hop on those live with us. We're going to have Q&A sections. We're going to have guest speakers um and uh who knows there might be a few uh real life superheroes on the on the call Ooh, fun mm. 